I hope that it's not like a very scholastic journey for them right. and it's more like a social. You know what they call that? Mm. Getting your MRS degree. Right. Oh right. yeah. Right. I mean, that is kind of clever. Yeah, it, it really is. Hello, Rami. Hi guys. I missed you so much. It is like, it's what analogy can we use? Like when, oh, it's like summer school is over. Yeah. And then you see, I mean, it's back to school. It, it's back to school. Like, go what, with me here. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> it's like just it's what this whole month has been. And now we're finally seeing our friends again. We're getting back to it. You know what it feels like? What? This is what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. I'm back in here. Okay. It's like choosing your outfit for the first day of school. Oh my God, Tess. I know. I'm I'm sweating now because that was like the the most pressure being put on that outfit. Do you just like who would you choose your outfit for back in like everyone? Yeah, you know everyone. I'm like though. would I choose it for like a crush or like my girlfriends? Both. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like I remember a lot of my first day of school outfits. My senior year, um, business casual all the way. It was like a pencil skirt. <gasps> Do you wear a pencil skirt? I, I had like a pencil skirt, like these sandals with like a kitten heel and like feathered earrings. Oh, oh <laughs> the feathered earrings, of course. That is something I, I actually don't, I can confidently say that like, I don't think that's going to come back in style. I hope not. But never say never. I mean, some things, some trends have come back around. I thought I was going to be out on ballet flats forever. I, I don't need six pairs right now. Look at us now. Truly. Um, welcome to Writing It's Mostly, a podcast on why you didn't learn in history class, but wanted to. My name is Claire Donald. My name is Tess Palomo. Uh, and we're, we're finishing up with a brand new back to school episode that we had probably a hundred people write in asking to do this. I'm so excited about the subject. I think it fits perfectly. I don't really know anything about it. Okay, so I mean, should we just, well, do we have any updates first before we get into it? Yes, um, well also while you're on your phone, please subscribe and give us a five-star rating if you're feeling generous and then a nice written review. And if you have constructive criticism, why don't you go ahead and just DM us at Right Answers Mostly on Instagram and TikTok. Please do, and if it's an extra sweet review, we will feature it in our went Thursday newsletter. DM us, and, uh, DM us your email and we will add you to that. But the most exciting mm -hmm. update. Yeah. Guys, we are having our first live show ever. <laughs> no, it's Tessa's dog. It's like, please. oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you can also check us out on YouTube to see our live reactions as well. Of course, at Right Answers Mostly, November 11th, 2003, 9:30 p.m. at the Lyric Hyperion. 2003. Sorry, 2023. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? I'm so sorry. I'm so thank you for catching my. We're mistake. going back in time. We're going back. We're time traveling, y'all. Like we always do, really. That's right. But 11, 11. I feel like that's good luck. First, you know, little experiment. I'm so nervous, but I'm so excited. It's. I just can't wait to connect with you guys in person. Yeah. I, also, guys, we're gonna smoke. Um, well, we're drinking a beer, very college. Um, of a course. Pilsner, and then we're going to smoke because we haven't smoked on an episode in so long. We're going to be going back to, you know, the college days. Yeah, for, your, yeah your college days. For my college days were full of weed. Um, weed every day, weed all day. Um, not, not like going to class and smoking, but every day that I got back from class, I'd I, get high. Yeah, I would have to. I feel like being high in like a lecture class would be really tough. Happened once and I like didn't enjoy it. I was yeah. like, I'm never going to do this not again. Not going to do this again. Um, a little ASMR. We oh, love that's okay. We love the Miss Grass joints. Oh yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. For later. Oh, yeah. you're ready. For, I know. I need a moment just because I was telling Claire, I am nervous because I haven't done a new episode for like five weeks maybe or something. That's so crazy. That's been so long. But you know, it's just you and me, babe. I know. It's just like you get in your head mm -hmm. and you're just like, is this gonna be is this gonna be interesting? Is this gonna be fun? But Rami's we always well, I just finished the Bama Rush documentary two days, so I'm, like, ready to chat. Good. Okay, so obviously we were talking about sororities. Mm -hmm. um, we got requests for history of Greek life and fraternities and sororities. And, honey, we have 93% female followers. Stick with the gal. We're keeping it to sororities. I was in a sorority in college, so I had some experience, even though it wasn't, like, the typical big school, mm -hmm. like... There was one sorority at the time when I rushed. At your school, there was only one sorority. There was only Delta Zeta, and then Theta was incorporated the year after. I was like, damn it! <laughs> That's like a lot of pressure because it's not like you have multiple options, obviously. Yeah, I was like, you get into it. Or... Well, good for you for making a cut. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, but Claire, I know you weren't in a sorority yourself, mm -hmm. but what are your perceptions of sororities? If you had rushed, would, or would you have wanted to rush? Yes. 
So I didn't go to college. I moved straight to LA after high school. But if I were to have gone to college, I absolutely would have rushed. My sister and my cousins were both AKOs at University of Georgia. Yes. I grew up in a college town at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. So I, you know, the sorority houses were everywhere. I would have gone to U of A. Um, and I definitely would have rushed. I think I probably would have ended up being a Kappa because that's where, mm. where the most people I knew were. Okay. Oh, wow. It's yeah. Like a, it's, it's so fascinating to like picture you in that life. It, I mean, it's, it's so, I don't know. I'm so excited to talk about this episode because growing up, I was like, that's so exciting. I stayed at, when I went to visit my sister, I stayed in a sorority house with her. Like I just thought it was very cool. And I still think it can be very cool, but there's so much to critique. There is. And like a lot of the subjects we talk about on RAM, while it is interesting and commendable and there's so many positive aspects about being in a sorority, there's also so many toxic yeah. traditions and things that stay the same, which doesn't benefit anybody. Right. And so I think this episode, like, I have such a positive association with my sorority experience because yeah. it was just pretty chill. Like, I was like a half-assed sorority member. Mm -hmm. I was in theater and so that took up a lot of my time and like there would be a lot of conflicts that like I couldn't go to something because I had rehearsal or had a show and like the gals were always very understanding well that's nice shout out to my big Chrissy who is a Rammy oh. she listens to every episode yes you do thanks Chrissy we bonded over being children of divorce during mm. Rush and Kardashians mm. she was the one who she worked for Kris Jenner I know like we need to have you on pod at some point. I know, because we talk about you all the time. Do you have an active NDA? <laughs> yeah. How much can I say? Yes, truly. Um, but I really liked it. Yeah. But I also, at the same time, felt like I didn't really fit in, even mm. though DZ at USF was like, it was like a variety of women and like different personalities, different styles, different sort of like work ethics within the sorority and I think I and like my kind of group was a little bit more like eh, this is fun but like I don't take it super serious it's not my life it was never my life yeah. I always thought it added to my college experience and I'm glad I did it because I didn't want to just be stuck with like the same like theater honestly like I was like I don't want to just like be <laughs> in theater I want to like yeah like how I was in high school I also had other friends outside of that I thought it was very important to like branch out well and that's why I would have definitely wanted to do it because it's like and I saw this so much on the Bama TikTok or the Bama Rush documentary. It's like you want a community to belong to and you want like automatic friends built in. Totally. And I, I didn't rush until second semester sophomore year. So I was a little bit behind. Oh, um, interesting. So that was interesting too because a lot of them, I mean, most of the girls had been there since freshman year. Did they have a sorority house? So in San Francisco, you are not able to have a, if there's more than eight women that live in a home together, it's considered a brothel. Stop. Mm -hmm. Shut your mouth right now. I'm not kidding. It was going to be a little fun fact, but I, <laughs> I'm but, so sorry. Oh no, I, I it. this is actually the perfect way. A brothel? So, yes. Stop. Does the same thing exist for men? Eight men living in a home, Claire? No. Of course not. Cause They're like, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> They're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mojo, dojo, casa. What's that mean? That's the Barbie. Um, oh, yeah. The Barbie tin. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Wait, so is that just in California or in San Francisco? It's just in San Francisco, I believe. But there's other, I forget who I was talking to. There's other cities that still, that, that's, that's still a thing. Crazy. It's like, guys, it's obviously like not a brothel. Yeah. And I think even if that wasn't the rule in San Francisco, San Francisco doesn't have a lot of like land. Yeah, that's for, like, so there's no sorority, like, USF was very, like, you were in, like, an urban setting. Totally. You had to get a fake ID to go to, like, bars and concerts and stuff. So, like, my, and that's also why I wanted to rush, because I was like, I want a little bit of that, like. Yeah. Like, I was Parties. comparing it to, like, Donna and McKinley, and I was, like, they're, you know, my friends at bigger Greek schools, and I was like, oh, I want, like, that. Totally. And that was fun, like, going to formals. Yeah. And, like. Oh, my gosh. I, all that stuff. All my homecoming dresses were my sister's hand-me-downs from formals. Oh, we love that. We love that. I, oh, it was just, that was, like, that was so much fun. Oh, I can't wait to hear all about this okay so should we just get into Let's it? it um okay so quickly my main source was this book called bound by a Ma mighty thou sisterhood and women's fraternities from 1870 to 1920 wow. by diana b turk other sources articles by la times vox buzzfeed bama rush and hbo yes and the podcast cult leader with spencer henry cult leader Mm, wow. That gives you a little foreshadow. Yes, and I actually, I cannot wait to get into this. Wow, this could have also been in spooky season. 
you know, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's a good transition into spooky season. It's true. Because you have to you have to laugh too, you, you know. Do. Just because it is it is kind of insane. It I mean, yes, it is. And like scary when they are like moving their like heads, like all the what is with the chanting? We'll get into it. Yeah, we'll 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 get into the okay. traditions. Okay, so before talking about the details of sororities, we have to talk about the origins of fraternities. Because, of course, without fraternities, there would be no sororities right. because, you know. Yeah. We, we got it about 100 years after uh, fraternities got started, but... Hey. Hey. They're uh, like, I guess they can have this now. Hey, at least, at least we got there at some point. Yeah. Okay, so the first fraternity in the United States was Pi Beta Kappa, which began in 1776 at William and Mary College in Virginia. William and Mary. I feel like it just, because we just were doing school trivia, I feel like I just saw it. Isn't that like a chic school? William and Mary? It sounds chic. Any school on the East Coast, also, of course, if one of my toxic traits, you guys, I am like a, um, what would you say? You're like um, an (laughs) Ivy League slut. That's what I would say. <laughs> I'm like obsessed with where people went to college. Yes. Just because I think it's so fun and fascinating. And I didn't have that like typical like the East Coast. You know what I mean? I just think it's so fun. I also want to like brag on people that I know that went to great schools. I'm like, yeah, Emma, what was it? Went to um, whatever graduate school at Germantown. Hot. Georgetown. Hot. Oh my God. Georgetown. I always Germantown. forget. So hot. I know. Yeah. I, I love that. Like our friend Alice went to Tufts. Yeah. Which hot. Love it. My I boyfriend went to Emory. Emory. I was wearing his Emory clothes, so I'm like, I wish people thought I went to Emory. Of course. So this is my toxic trait, so like, I just love the Ivy League, like, sluttiness of it all. Of course. Okay. So these guys, five students came together to form a social club on the principles of friendship, morality, mm. <laughs> funny, and learning. Okay. Okay. I feel like it's evolved a bit. Sure, sure. sure. But um, good, good to start off with. I love friendship, learning, and morality. Yeah, and this time, God, like, 1776, like, what what did college even look like? I will say, too, like, it is nice to see the men being like, hey, we need to be there for each other. For sure. You yes, know? we do love the the male. Like, a, a, a healthy companionship. 100%. You know what I'm saying? We love male friendship. <laughs> Who are we? See, we don't hate men. Exactly. We're just really trying to now because we've got a review saying that we hate men. And yeah, it's, it's not true. It's really not true. We hate the patriarchy. Hate the patriarchy. Love men. Men are the coolest, like as Sherry would say. <laughs> Have tons of men that we love and like. Exactly. Um, so they made a secret password. Oh. They created an insignia, 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 okay. a handshake, mm-hmm. and an initiation ritual. That, that's the scary part to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, are we going to talk about hazing? Of course. Okay, great. That's it's going to be more at the end of the episode in modern time. Okay, um, and it's going to be upsetting. Okay, so just get ready for that. I can't wait. <laughs> um, so these characteristics would later come to define all collegiate fraternities: friendship, morality, learning, and all these traditions of like you have a handshake, you have a song. Yes, all these things like that was really the start of it, and those still continue. Like we haven't seen much change in those traditions. It's like how secretive are the handshakes? Like, does your sorority have a handshake? Of course. So, like, would you feel comfortable doing it on film? Because, like, I think like I know Kappa Sig, the fraternity's handshake, but I'm like, is someone gonna come after me if I do it on film right now? I had that thought. Well, first of all, I don't remember mine. <laughs> I don't even think I really knew it when I was. I was always like kind of like half assed. God, yeah. what was it? I mean, like. There are so many things during this where I was like, am I allowed to say it? Or will someone, like, will DZ be like, you have... Well, I mean, I literally just, you know, watched the Bama Rush thing with the, the machine. Like, grown, grown as adults, right? The machine will come for you. Yeah, I wasn't scared in that way. Also, I just don't, because it was so long ago, I don't remember, like, our past... We had to, You had to say something when you went to every meeting. Okay. We had a handshake. We had a song. All of these things. We had a crest. Um, we had initiation ritual. So, yeah, we, we see it all today. hmm um, so, how did frats expand? So we have this one frat. What were they called again? They were Pi, Beta, Kappa. Is there a reason why they did the Greek alphabet? Because of, like, Greek scholastics. Oh. And how, like, Plato was the original man that, like, oh, interesting. knew everything. So scholarly. So scholarly. So, in the early 1800s, the Pi, Beta, Kappa members um, deci- decided to establish branches at Yale, oh. Harvard, oh. and Dartmouth. They're like, let's go to the top. That literally, they're like, this is chic, and yeah. we're just going to keep it going. Mm-hmm. In 1813, some other male students at Union College in New York, they were like, uh, we kind of want like a Pi Beta Kappa to be here. And the original Pi Beta Kappas were like, no, we don't like Union mm-hmm. College. And so then they were like, okay, we're going to form a second one. Wow. 
thus continuing the cycle of just all of these colleges the colleges then in the country being like, oh, now we have this one, this one. It was basically like if you didn't like, if they wouldn't accept you, you formed your own. Your own. It's like House Bunny. Exactly. Of course. Gorgeous film. It really is that gorgeous is film. Cinema. Isn't Catherine McPhee in that? I think she is, mm-hmm. which is crazy. That is crazy. Um, where she goes, this is humbling, and she's like, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She has a possession for it. Yeah, that's how she remembers names. Emma Stone, like, in her young career. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Maybe we should watch. I Maybe I should have watched before this, honestly. <laughs> yeah, for your research. Wow. I mean, literally. That would be real journalism. It is pop culture research. That's true. Um, so all of these frats adopted these mottos that translated into such things, basically saying love of wisdom and guide to life. And that was kind of their principle at the beginning, <laughs> which wasn't my college motto, <laughs> just to say the least. What was yours? Oh, God. It took me about, like doing theater and and smoking weed probably gorgeous and like who that who knows being being crazy as i'll talk about um oh, i can't wait in a different time those screenshots um <laughs> join patreon for 7.99 join patreon um so fac- faculty members immediately didn't trust these men mm, of course because who would be like oh a group of clicky white men in a secret club like, yeah something dangerous is happening over here does not feel safe yeah. for, for this campus um so that's why they kind of became more and more secret, and that's why the secrecy has like kind of continued because it's like we don't want faculty to know exactly what we're doing. We don't want them to get suspicious, and so wow, they're like, underground. Wow, mm-hmm. that makes total sense. And it's like if it was all fun and if it was all light, it's like fun to be like, don't tell the teacher, you know? Oh, exactly. But- so. Only a small fraction of women attended college. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, I think we have to, you know, you have to go back and be like, all right, most of campuses were filled with men and then a small portion were filled with women. And then that portion was fil- filled with only, you know, white privileged affluent women, affluent women. Wow. And also most of those women that were going to college were told that if they went to college, they would find a husband easier. Well, also, I think I saw, wasn't it in the Bama Rush Doc, where it's like that there used to be a text that would say if women got educated, all the blood would rush to their brain. Mm -hmm. We talked about this in one of our episodes. We did. Um, Was it plastic surgery? It's the teaching that if women get educated, all the blood will rush to their brains and not to, like, their reproductive system. And so then they would become sterile. Oh, yeah. So people people feared it. People were like, all right, well, if they're going to come here, I hope that it's not, like, a very scholastic journey for them. And it's more, like, a social. You know what they call that? Mm. Getting your MRS degree. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. I mean, that is kind of clever. Yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> Got to <laughs> hand it to them. But it's not okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so a lot of people thought that this would kind of ruin the, uh, ruin the natural, upset the natural order of society. Sure. Um. So, okay, so back to what was the first sorority. Okay. So this is kind of like, it's disputed of what is the first real one based on all of these different things. We are going to go for the sake of just consistency. Because we want to. Because we want to. Also, the book I read is all about Kappa Alpha Theta. Okay. And technically, that's the first Greek letter fraternity. Also, they called it fraternities for so long. Really? Before calling it sororities. What does a sorority mean? Sorority. Or fraternity. I wonder where they got those words. I think it's some Greek shit. Probably. <laughs> that's safe to assume. Yeah, I think it's something of like communal yeah. so, something. A Kappa Alpha Theta? Kappa Alpha Theta was founded on January 27th, 1870. Is that still Capricorn season? I think that might be getting into Aquarius. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? It doesn't Capricorn end on the 25th, I want to say. Probably Cuspy Vibes. Cus- Cuspy Vibes. So that makes sense. Uh, but they're all, there are people that think that also it started at like Wesleyan, mm-hmm. um, uh, Alpha, D- Alpha Delta Pi. They're like, that's kind of the first one because it was the first like, secret society for women so there's different i don't think either of those are at the university of arkansas oh really not mm-hmm. not kappa alpha theta i don't think so oh well today theta has more than 145 chapters in the u.s and canada oh canada and nearly 220,000 initiates including oh. famous sisters such as tori birch oh wow cheryl crow oh my god laura bush oh and melinda gates well, rich rich oh my god these women Rich. And I believe, oh, yeah, our Rami Caroline was the president of Theta at USF. Wow, Caroline, you would. She started it because that was the first. She start. You would. I know. I'm just, every time I talk to her, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I forget that you are, like, so incredible. incredible. She doesn't sleep. 
It's true. <laughs> what would happen if we slept less? Uh, get more shit done? I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out either. Um, okay, so, so only 11,000 women were enrolled in institutions of higher education across the country. That's crazy. It's such a small number. Compared to 52,000 men that were enrolled. That would be so scary to be on campus. Well, exactly, Claire. So, like, what do you, what do you think it was like in the classroom? Not safe, bitch. Not safe, bitch. So, male students and male professors actively ignored women. Oh, that would make me so mad. I'd be like, why am I even, like, I think I'd have a hard time, like, even doing it for the degree, because I'd just be so I'd start mad. crying. And just start crying. Start crying and screaming. Like, why aren't you looking at me? Uh, literally. Yeah. Um, and so women were like, all right, this, is, this isn't a great experience. Um, I don't really feel a sense of community. Yeah. I feel isolated. We're minorities on campus. But there was always one girl, though, that was like, you know, I actually don't even get along with women. <laughs> if Kirsten Dunst and Mona Lisa Smile, you have oh, to watch it. Oh, I have to it. watch. Okay, I have to watch. You have to. But yeah, truly. <laughs> just like, I'm just like at the boys. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm not like a regular girly, you know? I'm like drinking beer. <laughs> Which we are. Mm-hmm. Because we're like fratty. Mm-hmm. Um... So, of course, when women are feeling a little some way, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, I heard that there are uh, secret fraternities. Why don't we form organizations of support and friendship to help navigate this co-educational college life that was less than ideal? I love that. <laughs> so they're just like, we don't like it. Let's help each other out and yeah. actually make this a worthwhile experience. Yeah. So um, they conceived these groups called Worthy Female Students oh. to help... Combat male oppression. O- no, not oppression. Opposition. <laughs> but also oppression. But also right? oppression. Wow. Before you slip. And what's interesting in, like, the start of all of this, like, then you see, like, you're like, oh, that's so beautiful. And it's like, I feel like the research in this is such a wave of mm. being like, yes, that's great. Empowerment. Oh, not so good. Because there are just still a lot of, like, elite... Because it's still exclusive, and that's not the most welcoming. Clearly, it's in the name. Yeah, and we're going to, of course, get into the, you know, discrimination of it all. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, even, like, the worthy female students, it's like, well, then you're completely, like, ignoring the it's women like that aren't in it. GT. Did you guys have that at your school? What's GT? It stood for gifted and talented, and it was, like, special kids got to leave class to go to their GT class. I forgot about this. I was not in GT. Would it just be, like, honor students? It's like, yeah, the smart kids. Which, like, mm. hey, I, I did pretty well at the end in high school, but in elementary school, it's, like, literally traumatic. I know. The math. Math. Science. It, 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 it helped Spanish me. Spanish for me. Oh, yeah. We were not learning that in elementary school. Yeah, but that's but it does. That sucks. I know. I know. Um, so, inter- I thought this was interesting. So, the fraternity brothers were so secretive that they were, like, like, when we're out in, like, the real world, like, no one talk about this. They didn't wear their Greek letters. But women were like, let's wear our Greek letters loud and proud. I love that. So they had like a little bit more of like a performative aspect to it. Because mm-hmm. I think they also were just like, we need to be seen yeah. more than them. Do you think it helps like recruit other women too? I, I think so. Like yeah. come to the side. Yeah. Like, we got you, girl. Yeah. Love and, we, that. and we love that. So they did the same thing that the men were doing. They crafted elaborate rituals. Oh. They said that they were one link in a mystic chain of sisterhood. Thus, one person's decisions or actions would affect the entire group. So this is the start of, like, don't fuck up because then it looks bad as a chapter. Yes. And, okay, here's the thing. I can understand, like, what you mean by that. But the rules have, like, evolved or have not evolved. That it's freaking crazy. And also some of the rules literally don't make sense at all. Like, why do you even care? I know. That part was always weird to me. So we see this at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, so these women were like, look at us go. But then the interesting part too, is that, so like chapters are forming all throughout the country. So of course, a theta in the Midwest might be having a different experience than a theta in the South, than a theta in New York city. And so what ends up happening during this time, like as sororities are forming, there becomes like a little bit of competition and I think a little bit of like as it was expanding the different chapters had tensions around like class ethnicity Mm -hmm. religion Mm -hmm. and it was like perhaps a southern theta would be like oh 
like it seems like they're allowing just anyone into New York and then New York's like what the fuck in the south yeah it's all the same type of women and so right. like you're already kind of seeing this like tension brewing based on like your location in the country right which is interesting show and I'll say this with a grain of salt because it, at this point it's it's all white women right but even them being like oh that girl is protestant and yes. we usually just have you know like it just there's became, so many different ways to like single people out yeah. exactly so that's already starting making like a little bit of like once again like is that sisterhood if you guys are all theta shouldn't it not be like that but of course we're all scared of like what is different for us exactly <clears throat> show by 1920 we have 77,800 women in sororities. Wow. So it's pop, It's obviously popular. It's popping off. It, truly. Um, roughly 30% of women who are in college were also in a sorority. Okay. So, God, it just must have felt a little lonely to, like, I can just, like, a picture what that would feel like. To be to be on the outside, I think a little bit of just like I think now even to be on the outside. If you go to like a southern school, it's like well, what ends up happening is these women are like the women that are not in sororities are like, hmm, let's start to shit on them. Mm. And what are women in sororities like? They're slutty. They're stupid. They don't care about their education. They were called witches sometimes. Uh, Well, that's always a classic (laughs) one to throw out a woman you don't like. Always. And a lot of people and professors even critiquing the system were like, this is just based in affluence Mm. and super, it's superficial. And there's a quote that this woman, this female professor said about what she kind of saw stories looking like. And she said, um, they gained a moment of glory when their beauty or popularity singled them out for social honors. So she's on campus basically just recognizing that it's like, it goes immediately into that stereotype of just like, you're pretty and you can't be anything else. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. Do you think there, do you think that there was jealousy there by the people? I think it's always like so complicated. Cause yeah. it's like, I think with a lot of times when women have conflict, it is based in some kind of jealousy because yeah. we all do want to be on the same team. Of course. But I think and, it and has to be some projection of like what you can't have or what you don't understand. Right. And you know, all of that stuff. Well said. Um, so we can't talk about this. Like I said, without talking about the segregation that was going on. Right. And I really knew very little about black sororities. Right. Um, so in 1908, the Alpha Kappa Alpha was founded at Howard University. You know who went to Howard University? Candace Miller. We love you, Candace. We love you, Candace. Shout out to you. I just saw her post today that she went back to oh, like speak. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, I know. Love. 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 Um, so that was the first sorority for black college women. And then shortly after, in 1913, Delta Sigma Theta. Um, which is another black university that's big, was formed. Their colors are pink and green, right? I almost want to say that Giselle was a part of that one. Oh, she... Wait, I think she was. I think she was, too. My colors were also pink and green. Oh, were they? They were, like, lime green and, like, hot pink. Yes, and is it universal throughout... Yes. Okay. Uh, Mascot. We're the turtle. The turtle? The turtle. I was like, oh... (laughs) I was like, okay. One time I got a um, totem pole. There's like a spirit totem pole reading or something. Oh. Like that. I thought I was going in to get tarot cards or something. Wait, where was this? It was at House of Intuition. Um, classic. I really thought I was getting tarot cards, but I don't know. But she said that my career animal is um, a turtle. And I was like, awesome. You're like, that's cool. <laughs> hey, then you'll live a long time. Hey, and, you know, always finishes the race. That, that is true. It's okay. a lesson in, in life. In life, you could say. Yeah. Um, so now there are four total black, um, official, official black sororities because, so there's non-national sororities and then there's national sororities. Okay. And we'll talk about that later because it had to form like a bigger thing to essentially oversee them. Okay. So there are four national panhellenic, it's called sororities. Okay. Um, so despite racial inequality and Jim Crow laws, the founding members of Delta Sigma Theta sought to create equal opportunities. By emphasizing their values of sisterhood, Mm. scholarship, and service for its members and the world around them. So, in 1930, they were one of the first sororities to create systems for counseling. Like, therapy? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Scholarships and educational services. So, they were, like, one of the first sororities that was, like, let's actually, like, take care of each other. Really take care of each other and help other black women. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Is that Uh, available for other sororities now? Everyone should take note. 
I don't know. Yeah. Well, they should. I am just not sure. <laughs> You're like, I really don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I hope so. I, mean, I hope so too. That's amazing. I hope that things are better than when I was in college 10 years ago. You know? Like, I hope it just keeps improving. Yeah, exactly. That's all you want for, especially women. Exactly. Um. Oh, yeah. So I want to go through a little timeline okay. um, of black women in higher education in this country, just because I had literally no idea when any of like kind of milestones Same. started and, and, and where we're at. So in 1833, the Oberlin College in Ohio. We, mm-hmm. it, it's Santa. the first co-ed college. This was a trivia question. First co-ed college. Oberlin is a stunning college because they were the, fir- um, they were the, one of the first colleges that was open to black women. It has a long history of dedication to African American higher education. So not only was it the first co-ed, it was also like one of the first like integrated. Yes, I'm like, who started Oberlin? Who, like, who's running shit? Can we get them on the phone? They're like, we we have we're so tired. We have passed. R.I.P. But thank you for hey hey. I know, amazing, truly amazing. Um, by 1870, approximately 22 historically black colleges and universities were enrolling students in the United States. And how many did you say? Um, 22, 22 historically black colleges. Yeah. Um, 1872, Charlotte Ray became the first black woman to graduate from Howard University Law School. Law school. I like, feel hot because I think about like the clothes they were wearing in the 1800s and just sitting in a classroom. It feels so uncomfortable. No AC. No AC. Oh, <laughs> the heat panic. The heat, the heat panic. No AC and oh, no computers. No computer. Yeah. Just like chalkboard. Wow. Crazy. And pen and paper. Yeah, a feather in paper. Truly. Oh, yeah, that is that is true. Um, by 1900, one in three black professionals in the U.S. held a degree from Oberlin. Wow, Oberlin. Um, and then around this time, too, and then we'll be kind of like caught up in go, going back a little bit. There were 78 black colleges and universities in the United States. Over 2,000 black men and women had earned higher educations and it was about 390 from white colleges and universities. Oh, wow. So there's still, you know, there's still separation. Right, right. Well, I just, I also didn't know I was like at this time in our, in this country, what's the percentage of black women that graduate versus white women that right. graduate. And it is still at 51% of Slightly more than half of white women, 51.4% have a college degree compared to 36.1% of black women. That's now? That's that's from 2021. Wow. I guess I'm, it's like, it, like the, um, what is it called? Where it, Despair. this, this Despair. disparity yeah. is crazy. Mm-hmm. And also I'm even shocked that like only half of white women in the country have a degree. I know. I was kind of, I was just, but I guess in this room, there's two of us and only one of us does. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. But the disparity is like, I, I mean, know it's always tough. So yeah, I just wanted to like put some of those numbers out just in case anyone else was like, what was going on in yeah. this time for, for black women going, going to college? I thought that was a really interesting part about the documentary is where that one black woman was like, I don't feel like I belong in the, or I think she might've been mixed race in the black sorority, but I don't feel like I belong in the white sorority as yep. well. I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just so like at USF, we rushed and there was one option, there was DZ. And then we did have a black sorority on mm-hmm. campus, but we didn't do community things with them it was very still like we were one side and they were another side and like we didn't have like mixers and this was in 20 fucking 11 right and it's like why would you not you know it it literally makes no sense i was just like oh that's the way it is like you know and then there was another black story that wasn't national so they weren't like allowed to do certain things i was like the rules around sororities are just like there's so many rules it there really are and they just kind of a lot of them don't make sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to go back a little bit now that we have established what everything's kind of looking like right now. What was Rush like back in the day? Please tell me. Okay. Back in the day. Back okay. in the day. So we're going to go back to like early 1900s, okay. even late 1800s. Of like, what did this look like? So originally members were given formal invitations and initiated one by one, often on separate occasions. Rush comes from the period when the fraternities and sororities literally physically rushed 
to get the fresh, like grab the freshmen before they would be recruited by another sorority or fraternity. I don't like that. Like, <laughs> like someone charging at you. Charging. That, like, they have a little chill. Yeah. Truly. No chill is to be had. So now we have replaced rush with recruitment. Is that what they're saying that people say now? That is what is the official. That's what you're supposed to say. I, recruitment. No one's saying that. No one is saying that. Um, which signifies the active role of a chapter to find the best members for their organization. But we're just going to call it Rush. So this is what a theta at the University of Oregon said about Rush in 1897. Oh. Okay. Rush Week was, was one of the most strenuous and exciting thing that has ever been known to Oregon. <laughs> From the time the girls all met at the train that night of their arrival until the morning of Pledge Day a week later, they were not lost sight for a minute by the five nations. I don't know what five nations means. I'm scared. Some rushes had their suitcases at one house, trunks at another, themselves at still another. The days and nights were filled with formal and informal parties, as well as individual rushing stunts. Um, kidnapping was even being <laughs> resorted to. <laughs> By one of the prominent nationals in the case of an attractive freshman. What? Mm-hmm. So, she goes on to say that basically what you're looking at, tease, proper tease to get to know the girls, tea. like fan, high tea. Oh, high tea. Well, like that drinking, sounds fun. Drinking tea. Drinking. Mm-hmm. I bet. A little spike tea. Of course. Um, receptions. At the turn of the century, they were even more formal. It was like card parties oh, and like dances. Bridge. Yes, and like... Oh, um, dance cards when you had to, oh. um, so like back in like the day of like balls, yeah, you would write down who you wanted to <gasps> dance with and you would, you would put it around your wrist Cute. and then it was like this little, like, and it's like mm-hmm. teasing. Yep. At Cotillion, um, it was always like finding one boy that was like, because you did. I always forget that you did this. I did. And it was, we had to wear gloves, but it was so exciting, Cotillion was, because you got to dance with boys. Like, that's why I went. Uh, of, that's why I would want to go Of too. course. But you were not allowed to say no when a boy asked you to dance. I was cruel. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm like, I don't even, I'm not going to tell this story anymore. That is so fucked up. <laughs> yeah, but you're, this is what we're instilling with women. That's <laughs> so true. I didn't even think about that. I'm just like, no matter what they say, you have to say yes. <laughs> you can't say no. Oh my God. I even just like a single cheer. <laughs> just like, all right. <laughs> I can't. I never even thought about it that way. Uh, Wait, have I ever seen your cotillion photos? I'll send it to you. Have I? I need to like, Crop them because I don't. What do you mean? There was a friendship falling out with the girl oh. that I used to get a cotillion with all the time. I, I, love and life. Love and life. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Can't reveal my cotillion photos. No, I'll post I them for you guys Please. at Right Answers Mostly. Please do. Um, so I think with these like balls and parties, it kind of like becomes obviously that's like so fun. Yeah. And then I think it also becomes a little bit like who's the prettiest one, who has the best outfit. Who's bo- like even back back in the day? It's like who's skinny, who's hot, and like I all like that, that shit that we see that's just so unfair. And and then like when the frat guys would come in and mingle, it was just very like sexually charged, like and it was that. very much like they had a say, and you know what I mean. Like and they obviously like weren't like choosing who, but it was all like po- it was like a popularity and pretty contest yeah. at this point. So it kind of did turn into that. Presentation really mattered. Um, a quote from one pledge. Okay. I hope that I shall be invited to join the fraternity, meaning sorority, because a person is nobody at all if they are not a member of some frat. It will be very expensive to join, but I wouldn't go through the year for anything in the world without joining if they asked me. Because that's literally exactly what they were saying on the Bama Rush documentary. They just didn't say shall. This is in 1800s. It's, it's the exact, exact same, same thing. It's like you're nobody on campus yes. unless you're part of this club. Because I hear that and I'm like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And then I'm like, oh, but it also, especially at this time of your life, I like know. you just want to belong to a community. I know, especially like, and for women who are like, yes. we're scared to even fucking be here. I know. God, I just wanted to hold every single girl in that documentary. I cannot... Oh, God. What? I think I cried like 10. I did cry like 10 times. I was just like, I'm watching American youth, youth right now. It's like what I told you. It's like, I, I think that I'm still 22 and I'm not. I know. I, I still think I'm 18. I'm not. No, because you're like, life isn't dependent on being likable. Exactly. But it used to be. It did. And you have like such compassion watching these young women who are just like, I'm about to start my life and I want to be loved. No, I know. And like, even when you think about 
like friends that you had that you don't have anymore when you're 18. It's just because you're like grabbing onto anything yeah. and you're like, okay, that served me for a certain point. But like those weren't soul friends yeah. because it was kind of just based on like manic connection. Right. Wanting that connection. Exactly. Like that, like, like that letter. Truly. Wow. So speaking of how expensive it was to yes. join, let's talk about dues. Okay. And uh, don't you worry, because I did the cal calculator for all of it. It's this. been so long. I know. I know you'd be proud. I am. Okay. So in 1870, so dues are how much you have to pay to be a part of a sorority. Does it, like, get you anything besides just being... So that's what I thought. I was like, when I joined, I was like, oh, I think our per semester, I want to say our dues were, like... 500 or 600 maybe? Yeah. Did I see on the doc there's like 8,000 per year or something like that? Oh. Well, I think with bigger Greek schools, yeah. especially like if you live in the house and like all of totally. that stuff, for us it was like relatively cheaper. But I was like, oh, then that probably means you get like the clothes, I mean, the t-shirts. a month would essentially be $6,000. not that big of a difference. 500 a semester. Oh, a semester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. But I remember trying to like explain it to my parents, and they were like, "What? Like, okay." And I think I, I think I lied, and I was like, "It's for like the transportation when we're going to like charity things." <laughs> so in 1870, dues range from a dime to 25 cents per term. Um, in the turn in like early 1900s, it was between one dollar and three dollar per month. $1 to $3 per month. The calculator says that that would be about $24 to $70 a month now. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. And this is without living in a house with, like, meals and all that stuff. That's, like, to me, that like, $70 a month, that's how much it should be. Like, maybe it does go to transportation when you're doing charity. Uh-huh. <laughs> charity. Charity. When I... No, actually, I may see... No, no, I don't think I can see this. <laughs> oh, scary. No. I the machine. No, I know, because I'm, like... I, I want to say something that I like did. Do you think? Do you think our episode's gonna make it to the machine at Alabama? What will they do? What will the machine do to us? Machine, reach out to us. Machine, <laughs> write us a review. <laughs> yeah, leave a five star review. Leave a five star. Oh, this joint is hitting perfectly. Oh yeah, maybe I'll find the smoke now. Yeah. I like calm down. <laughs> okay, so it was expensive. Yeah, it was expensive, and then we have this little problem called hazing. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So, hazing has been around, not even with sororities or fraternities. Hazing, hazing was around in early college days in, like, the 1700s with faculty and staff. <laughs> faculty and staff. Or, uh, fa faculty and students. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> probably... <Faculty> and staff. <laughs> and also probably... Probably within the faculty. Basically, yeah, there's a system of hierarchy that we have seen in so many ways. I picture it like the great... Like, where it's like, why are you being crazy right now? Well, You're a grown adult. Like, why do you feel the need to do this? Well, literally. And so they fucking got this from Plato, too. Everyone's just chasing back, like... <laughs> At some point, give it up. Give up the Plato stuff. <laughs> in, in Plato's Academy in 387 BC, it basically says that there's a natural way to teach newcomers the way. Oh. Which is very scary. What is that? It basically means that new... So, in terms of college... A newcomer to the university was thought to be this untutored man. <laughs> okay. Meaning that they needed to be polished. They needed to know hard hardships. Uh, basically <laughs> you meaning... To, you need to know hardships? They need to know hardships, basically meaning that they were physically abused, <gasps> humiliated, oh my God. forced to wear inappropriate clothing, and inferior to all upperclassmen and staff, which usually ended after an entire freshman year that they were like you made it now you can do it to the freshmen Wait, their whole year they're getting hazed yes like you like, get hazed your whole freshman year back in like the 1700s at college i guess they did i kind of think that in some fraternities it's still like that though i think like they're always like you always have to wake up and go clean the house like once a week yeah like stuff like that i think freshman year for fraternities is it's not a good safe it's time. not kind because i always thought that it was just during like rush rush yeah, I think they trick they they that is so keep weird. it going. Why is that a thing? Can I get the light? Yeah, of course. Oh, thank you. Um, so have you ever read Animal House, by the way? No, and I haven't <laughs> seen the movie. I have no desire it to. It scares me. It just stresses me out. Me I'm like, this is not necessary. <laughs> um, okay, so hazing, we're gonna talk more about hazing in modern times, 
because there's just a little bit more stories and like accounts that people have. Mm -hmm. But hazing was already going on in 1800s. People were like just treating the freshmen and the pledges like shit. And just like we said, making them do embarrassing things, wearing weird shit, being mean to them, physically hurting them. For what? It's just so weird to me. Also back in the day, like physical abuse wasn't like a crime. You know what I mean? No, it was not a crime. It wasn't a crime. Like you could just like hit, you could kill someone and basically just be like. It was the wild west. Like it was wild. Like I wanted to. Yeah, exactly. Good enough. Exactly. So this is when I was talking about earlier that the pan, the National Panhellenic Congress was formed. Oh. And they're kind of like, they oversee all the shit. And so they were like, we're seeing things <laughs> that we don't feel comfortable with. They're like, we're seeing a lot of drinking, mm. a lot of partying, um, kind of like ignoring your, your learning, oh. hazing, and extreme discrimination. Oh. So in 1908, they hand out this survey to a bunch of different fraternities and sororities. And they're like, tell us about what it's like. <laughs> this is going to be anonymous, so don't you worry. And what they saw... Oh, my God. ...was really terrible. Really? So they are seeing basically just tons of racist behavior. Oh. And they're seeing it within white sororities. They're seeing it within black sororities. There is a lot of anti-Semitic jargon and rules going oh on god. about not admitting jewish women oh my god and not admitting catholic students to many different sororities is um, what they were seeing yeah i don't know why back in the day like being catholic it was a big deal that jfk was one of the first catholic presidents because oh, yeah. people were like not chill with him being catholic why why i don't know <laughs> like it literally I like i thought people like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I literally have no idea. Like, none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. Um, in the black sororities, they found out that there were some chapters that were doing this thing that prohibited any woman to be initiated if her skin color was darker than a paper bag. Oh, my God. So they were literally like... That's disgusting behavior. Disgusting. And they were like, what is going on? I mean... Uh, God, probably back in the day, they were like, this isn't great, but like... I know, but the, yeah, exactly. But they still were smart enough to be like, all right, we need to like fix some things. Um, this is also during the time... You, this is actually kind of funny. They were like, let's make sorority houses the thing so that we can like keep them all together to kind of like... Because <laughs> it's like, they've gone wild. The girls have gone wild. The girls have gone wild. So they're yeah. like, okay, this is where sorority houses form. Um, and so they wanted to keep them kind of like all under one roof. But then of course, like... During that is really when there's this rise of, like, sorority members with higher positions, like, blacklisting other oh members who were seen bringing boys back. Oh, my God. Who were drinking or smoking. Like, all these things that's, like, shit, as much as it changes, it it's just a, stays the same. It's like, you're such a wet blanket. I just cannot believe that's it, this part. Crazy. I, I know. I know. However... It wasn't always like this. Um, sororities, we're going to skip a little bit to like 1960s, 1970s. What's going on in the 60s and yeah. 70s? The free love. Mm -hmm. We have a little free love and we have a little resistance oh. over what Greek life used to look like. Um, so like until the 1960s, Greek life pretty much dominated like all of these big schools. Um, but then with um, the student unrest in the, in the war... Oh. Um, people were like, let's kind of redefine how we think of like using our time for good right. and if these systems are helping us. And so like, it's always nice to like remember that the 60s and 70s like had that, you know? Like the youth movement? Uh -huh. Yeah, I was just thinking you know, that. Like, like, it seems like the youth really came together. They did. Yeah. I think they were just like, we have to stick together because no one else fucking cares. I know. I mean, I hope, I, I hope we're seeing that in Gen Z a little bit. I think we are. I think we are. I hope so. But I worry about them with, like, TikTok. I know. Because I'm like, that's going to just ruin all of their mental health by the time that they're, like... <laughs> I know. I know. Like, 20. Um, so students turned their attention toward political issues and began to question organized establishments as a whole. Mm -hmm. The Greek system went downhill. And it just became less appealing. So formal parties became, like, hangouts. Like, everything just sort of, like, lessened. Well, everything was getting less, like, fancy in the world. Yes, exactly. Um, but then we see a rise of that back again in the late 90s and early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of does go like this. And I feel like right now it's probably a little bit at, like, a... It's got... I don't know. Yeah, because it's like... I think that, too. But, but then I'm also, it. like, I think if we're in the South, like... That's it's, true. It's 
still, I mean, literally there was just a documentary made about it because strangers from all over the world are turn, tuning in and rooting for girls rushing that on is, TikTok. That is so true. So I think it's still big. It might be the biggest it's ever been. No, I, I yeah, I guess I'm just thinking of like my little bubble. But that that is true because we're going to talk about some of the controversies today. Okay. Um, and what we kind of see Greek, Greek life look like in modern day. So I'll preface this by saying that like, like we've talked about, sororities embody you know sisterhood community acceptance in some ways Mm -hmm. you know you can network and like have sisters throughout your entire life there's a charitable charitable aspect to it it's community there are so many things i think are great right right i think problems that we really see today starting out with diversity and race Mm -hmm. hazing the sexist double standard in the greek system which is (sighs) insane it's crazy. And the fact that the fraternities are the ones ranking the sororities, when I heard that on the Rush documentary, I just want to grab a hold of all yeah. those girls and be like, do not let these weenies determine your worth. These little, like, 90-pound, like, 18-year-olds are their gonna... khaki shorts and their tennis shoes? You're going to let them determine your worth? No. We stand together. Tell you, like, no. like, don't let anyone tell if you're hot or not. No. And that's, like, not what it's about. Like, you should be in these to celebrate your womanhood and your sisterhood. I know. I know. So... That is frustrating. And then, um, you know, one of the most disturbing parts of Greek life is, is unfortunately, the sexual assault that occurs. Yes. When that one girl in the documentary, sorry to bring this, like, a recap of the documentary, too. But when she was like, oh, yeah, I've been roofied so many times. That was so heartbreaking. And that it is such Sorry, a... Sorry, I should have said a trigger warning. Maybe we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll actually, like, just start a little bit of a trigger warning right now. Probably yeah. till the end of the episode in about 10 minutes. Um, just because we are going to be talking about sexual assault. And hazing has some pretty graphic yeah. and, and terrible... I was just shook that the, it was so casual. And that is so not okay. Well, I I have never been roofied. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I saw my roommate roofied and the way that even we like the next morning, it was like, um, like it wasn't a joke, but it was so subdued to like all of us just like, so sorry that happened. Like, that's crazy. Not like how does this happen so casually and it's expected to happen to women and not boys and boys and Kurt, like it's so disgusting and predatory. Oh my God. That's so sick. Yeah. So it was just part of like culture was being roofied. It's like, how do we make this stop? And we will, we'll talk about it with a lot too, of like the double standard. Cause it's really like re, it's just changing the narrative from, you know, girls be careful to watch your drink to guys stop don't this. roofie or assault women. Yeah. I'm not like try to protect yourself with this, but like, you know, exactly. We need to do better. So speaking of university of Alabama, mm. I was just shook to my core about the the, the racism oh and just yeah. like even the the university as i mean like their practices are so fucked and everything has taken so long to change yeah that i was shook so basically i mean greek life across the country has been criticized for exclusionary practices we'll say but the lack of diversity is especially stark at the university of alabama which has a long history of segregation mm-hmm the university itself was desegregated by force in 1963, nearly a decade after 1959 landmark Brown versus Board of Education decided decision outlawed segregation in schools. Um, that year, Alabama Governor Wallace. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Was like, no, 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 we're going to fight yeah. this. And we're going to like turn it back to the way it should be. Yeah. Disgusting. Disgusting. They have a scene of this in Forrest Gump. He's like in the background oh my God, of him yes. making the speech because he goes to University of Alabama. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Like, disgusting. Disgusting. Wallace refused to desegregate the University of Alabama, even physically blocking black students from entering the door of its enrollment office with the help of state troopers. It's really upsetting. Um, President John F. Kennedy deployed the National Guard to the university to... Yes. Uh, force its desegregation. That that is wild, that, and that's not even that long ago. That, 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 that's this school's history. Well, funny you may say that, Claire, because Greek life at the University of Alabama remained segregated until 2013. Wait, what are you talking about? The first sorority. Well, we'll explain. Okay. So the first sorority at the school was founded in 1904, but not a single woman was black uh-huh. in that sorority until 2000. 
2003 or 2013? 2003. Okay, 2003. But then, so 2013 is when... um, I mean, that is wild. I mean, truly wild. So it wasn't great. And then in 2013, an explosive story from the University of Alabama student paper, The Crimson White, revealed that the all-white sororities at the school were told to deny black students. We were told, do not take black girls because it would be bad for our chapter, our reputation, and our status, Yardana Wolf says. I can't believe that there is these young women Mm -hmm. in 2013 talking like this. I know. And that's my ignorance, but like, what the fuck, guys? No, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So this story in the school paper was the first kind of like start of the movement to be like, oh, now that we're outed because of it now we need to start trying to diversify so i think university of Albion is a good representation of just like how we can look at greek life today because if that's still happening that's how we need to look at all of it like if that's yeah. happening at one chapter you know that that's happening in a lot of other schools absolutely and i think that you know the panhellenic council is allowed to get away with this shit because it's like they're supposed to be like schooling to make sure that that behavior doesn't happen they're not forced especially let's say in this time like 2010 right before this happened like they're not forcing anyone to change anyways because they are making money they Uh, are they're the big guy they're the ones that are like it's working for us so why should we try to like put it to change the system I think it's like an evil villain running that I feel like it's corporation. An evil villain too, but it's like, God, it's what you see with everyone at top in this country that they're so just true. not looking out for yeah, the individual. Yeah. yeah. Um. So number two, that is tough, tough still in modern day sororities is hazing, and while it's mostly fraternities that have issues and like serious hazing, dangerous practices. A 2000 study found that 68% of women in Greek life have experienced hazing. Like, what? We're going to go through a couple examples, and this might be really upsetting and graphic, but I think it's important to talk about the severity of it because it happens constantly and people are put in danger. Yeah. So, University of California, Berkeley. Okay. In 2012. Brittany Starling um, sued the Zeta... Phi Beta sorority after what happened to her during pledge week. She claimed she was forced to clean up juice from the floor using her back and act as a trash can from the other girls, taking whatever garbage they had and carrying it in their pockets. Starling claimed things reached a physical level when she and the other pledges were forced to stay awake all night without being permitted to use the bathroom. They were also allegedly forced to stand for hours, and when Starling's leg gave out, she claimed a member hit her ankle with a book injuring her severely what is wrong with like why would that would just feel so crazy to be doing these this to like, another per, to, to like another person like, like you want to be also how, how, how do they become friends become friends no, like sisters for life you know what it is stockholm syndrome mm-hmm. wow damn sisters for life <laughs> you beat the shit out of me the other it's night so crazy with a book and now like we're supposed to make yeah and they're like that's just how it is like that's crazy so this woman leaves college because of it. She leaves the school. Oh my it. God. So that's her emotional and physical trauma that will probably stay with her for the rest of her life. No kidding. In 2008, um, Penn State sorority pledged Joanne, who didn't wish to share her last name, um, told ABC News she was forced to stand with her nose against a concrete wall during rush. She said if the, she or the other pledge is moved at all, they had their slant, head <gasps> slammed into the brick. Joanne also allegedly had to clean a floor with fingernails and drink what she described as pitch black water. No. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is... I just can't imagine doing this to another person. It's crazy, guys. I know. Um, To abbreviate this one, at California State University, Los Angeles, there um, was a woman that said that they had to literally go into the ocean um, and the rough seas... This was in, yeah, 2002. Ended up two girls drowned because of it and died. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. It's like at what cost? And and then it said that the school couldn't even recognize it as, like, 
they were just like, well, you know, like things happen and like what? I, this always happens with schools and like what? God, it's like literally like Lord of the Flies. It's like the, they're children together on an island who are just like trying to survive that like turn evil. Literally. So we just have countless stories of this, like driving drunk in cars and having to go like speed each other. I mean, like stuff that I honestly was shocked that women do. Wait, like what? With, no, just like compared oh. to like if I heard like fraternity brothers doing this. Yeah, I know it's like not fair too, but I'd be a little bit more like. That makes sense, but like women, no, that's a, I'm that? having a hard time too. Like you're slamming her face against. The I'm just like, where does this, where does that come from? Where does that come from? And how do you, literally, how do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? Oh, <laughs> but like actually, it's really disturbing. And like you just go about your day, literally, literally. slam the girl's face into concrete. It's fucked up. It's so <laughs> fucked up. Um. And then talking about double standards. So what did you, when you watched Alabama Rush, what did you get from the double standard in the frat and sororities? Like, well, like what were your takeaways? I just think fraternities can literally do whatever they want. It's like boys will be boys. And the women have so many rules. So in a lot of like researching certain fraternity rules versus sororities and a lot of the houses, boy, frat guys can have women stay over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Women can't have men stay over. That is crazy. Mm. Um, oh, was that? No, it's no. Oh, no. Are you okay? Oh, God. <laughs> Don't move that. Don't move, Don't move the tripod. Check <laughs> that on YouTube. Yeah, please. It, like, God, for this episode. <laughs> You're in for, for a treat. It's true. Um, yeah, so men could host parties, women... Like, yeah, so where do you say can't host parties at their house, right? No, you can't host parties at your house, but men can. <sighs> um, let's see. It's forbidden to bring alcohol onto campus or uh, into your house for a sorority, but not for fraternities. And like Bama Rush said, that the, the, the frat guys decide these are the ones that are hot and these are the ugly girls. That's literally what they say. And there's a just... voice. There's a... Also... That actually doesn't even make sense. Doesn't everyone have a completely different type? Yes, of course. A person they're attracted to. Of course. So why? So who's making these rules? Uh, But that's what I'm saying. But there is like a certain type. I don't know. I know. It it just. I just want to like hold them. I know. And just be like, ah, Uh, truly. And you know, the oh, this that's where I was going to put that USF was considered a brothel, or the USF housing would have been considered a brothel. That's so crazy. Which is just wild. Um. And, you know, lastly, and I don't, we're, we will end on a more positive note, but we cannot talk about the Greek system without talking about the epidemic that is rape culture. Uh, yeah. And women in sororities are 74% more likely to be raped than any other college woman. Because they're going to those fraternity parties? I think so. I think it's like... I'm just saying, like, that's where yeah. the activity is happening. Yes. Okay. Of course. I think it's because they're... Yeah, I, I mean, like, I actually don't really know. Um, maybe, Is it, like, the certain type of guys in fraternities that's... I just don't know. I know. It's, like, where does that... I mean, that statistic is shocking. Shocking. But maybe it is because they're going to these social events with roofies and that's the frat crazy. culture. And that's like, yeah, the frat culture is the problem. So it's just... It's just absolutely terrible. Um, I read this article about USC. Oh. And USC has a lot of terrible allegations. Yeah. I feel like I feel scared thinking about, like, the USC Greek system. I feel like it's wild. Well, it's crazy. And they have not really put an end to it because a lot of these fraternity brothers that are accused, the Greek alumni are the ones that donate to the school. And so they don't do anything about it? They're like, well, fuck, if we call out... Oh my god, Jason guys. from Pi Ba Ba Ba, then our alumni who's giving us thirty million dollars a year, these guys at the top top of the USC is like It's crazy, but it's also kind of like you can't find one millionaire that's not so disgusting that you can replace that money with. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I it's crazy. Well, that's what you value. This professor at the University of Kansas, Nicholas Siret, says fraternities are protected not just by their race, but by their privilege. Um so I mean they're they, that's a, they're protected. They're, that's so crazy. And they have money. It's and so they crazy. have power. And they have powerful people in them that are alumni that continue to support them. That's crazy. We have um, actually quite a few friends that were um, in this or, 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 or Greek life system at USC. We do. Mm-hmm. And great people. Yeah, great. And I, uh, well, I've heard mixed reviews. But. Oh, wait. I know. Um, oh. Like, that, and Allison. Oh. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, mixed reviews. 
Yeah. Oh, about USC. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, mixed reviews of the people. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> mixed reviews. <laughs> okay, um, I've also heard mixed reviews. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember visiting for a college tour with Donna, and we stayed with our friend who went there. And I was just like, this place gives me, like, it's an amazing school. It's, I felt the so. The campus is crazy. The campus, it was so crazy. Everyone was so hot, though. Oh, really? Like, I remember just looking around, and she, the woman we were staying with played water polo. Oh. And she was, like, a hot little thing. And oh. all of her friends were. And I just remember being like, all of these freshmen look 45. <laughs> Truly. Southern California. And it was just, like, a little. So many L.A. kids. It was scary. It was a little yeah. scary. <laughs> it's intimidating. It is an intimidating school, for sure. Truly. Um, so, God, we're just going to conclude this episode because it's been an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, so. sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, don't apologize. This, is, this was my fear that I would just... I don't think an hour and 15 is crazy. You okay. guys let us know what you think. Let us know. I, I mean, think it's crazy. I know. I always try to keep it around an hour, but, you know, we're back and this is a new episode, so... Yeah, we're catching up. We're catching up. Um, but obviously, you know, there's just so many, so many things that... Stories are complicated. Yeah. It's just like everything we've talked about today. Nothing is really black and white. There are things that are... Actually, there are things that are 100% yes, wrong. For right. sure. But I think, like, as the institution as a whole, it's complicated. It's complicated. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> to move the whole camera. Um, okay. So I think we just have to, like, always talk about how we can, like, move with the times. Like, yeah. we always say, and, like, sure, we honor, like, certain traditions, and certain traditions fucking suck, and yeah. they're sick, and they're not right. And so, like, how can cr- we create the space that is supposed to just support students while also like being doing the responsible thing and yes. like teaching these students that like the world does not look like this and yeah. we need to expand and diversify. It and would only make the whole program better. Like if it would just modernize and actually protect all of their students and you know have I don't know, which is crazy. I know. <laughs> so we will end with talking about some famous celebrities. Oh and um yeah what? Oh, that's a great game. Just to like just talk sorry about, about that transition. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I love smoking and recording, honestly. <laughs> I forgot how crazy it is. It's so fun. Um, so we have Meghan Markle. Oh, oh, what was she? She joined Kappa Kappa Gamma at Northwestern okay, University. Right, right. See, that was the one that I said I would join. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'd be that one. Oh, you know, I didn't even mention all of the names that they call sororities. Like, um, Kappa Kappa Grandma. Yes. And then what's the word about, what's the one about like the STD? Oh, is it, well, I, there's also one that's try, uh, try and fail, try to help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these or do we do we see these about fraternities? No. And oh my god, what's the oh my god? There's some terrible one. It's isn't it like Kappa Kappa gonorrhea or something? <laughs> Maybe. I'm just like God. Stop. Stop. Stop shaming. It's stop so shaming. Crazy. Um, we have Courtney Kardashian. Oh, was a member of Alpha Phi at, at U University of Arizona. U- University of Arizona. Wow. Good job, Claire. Um, Maya Angelou oh. joined Alpha Kappa Alpha as an honorary member in 1983. Oh my god, I love it. She's an honorary member. Also, Aretha Franklin is an honorary member of Delta Sigma Theta. Oh my god. I know, it's like gorgeous. Um, we have Lucy Liu oh. um, at the University of Michigan. Good school. Yeah. Um, she was a part of the Chi Omega. Chi Omega. Chi Omega. I was like, fuck, that's not Chi. <laughs> Chi Omega. Chi Omega is another good one at University of Arkansas. Um, Let's see. We have um, Ka- uh, Kamala Harris I was. Kamala Harris good. Sorry. Wait, which one? <laughs> I'm talking to myself. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a chaotic episode. What a chaotic episode. But we're Kamala Harris. <laughs> She's Kamala Harris is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. Okay. Where? Um, at uh, Howard. Oh, at Howard. Oh my yes. gosh. I feel like I remember her saying that. I know. Sweet. And yeah, we'll just stop there. <laughs> that's so interesting. Oh, <laughs> guys, that's that's a word. Oh, I'm so happy to be back with you. Tess, that was really fun. I <sighs> like it was such a conversation piece and I felt like you were nervous about not getting enough information. I felt like you had so You're much like you had it too much. <laughs> no. I think it was so oh, that's good. It just was like a little I think with anything that's like here's this big thing without it being like an event or like a person's life, sometimes I'm like, I don't know what direction to go to. Right. I don't know like what moments to focus on. I thought it was great. And I still don't don't know what I can focus <laughs> on. <laughs> I was a perfect TikTok sound right now. What? It's where Chris Jenner goes to be honest. I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> 
That's the energy for this episode. Oh my god, it is. Uh, but guys, that's sororities. Oh, I loved it. You know, let me know your experience in one. Yes, honestly, <laughs> the documentary is pretty interesting. It is. So, if you want us to do a, like, a deep dive review, maybe we could do that for an October oh, Patreon. Oh, that's true. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. And I'll tell my story on Patreon, yeah. too. I'll just a little flip right Good there. idea. Good idea. But I had a great time, so <laughs> I'm so glad okay. to be back. I'm excited for this month. Me, too. Or for I, next month. I'm really excited for... I'm going to, like, take a 180 yeah. for oh. spooky season, and it will be very different than this episode. October is going to be beautiful. It really is. I can't wait. But you guys follow us on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and threads and all the things at Right Answers Mostly. We're going to have our full video up there as well. Join our Patreon. All of the links are in the show notes. Beautiful, and have a great day. We love you, Miami. Bye. Bye. I had so much fun, honestly. Okay. I, it I, was chaotic. I'm so sorry, because I think I kept making it more chaotic. No, I kept, more like, fine. not um, knowing... I thought it was like to me it felt like an old episode though like our early 2000s one where we just like you're just like just fucking go that's true like not taking it so (laughs) so seriously I think it was fun I mean I had a great time hey I'm I'm glad you did (laughs)